Hi, it's Lipstick Gal. Thank you so much for watching today. It's time for some August favorites. I can't believe the month is already over. It's the 1st of September and I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> so my kids are already back in school. Um, we're kind of getting into our regular schedule and it's just a little bit weird. Like, we're, and I know we're not officially to summer until like the 21st of this month, but I'm still like, wait, well, huh? where did it go? <laughs> That's how I've been feeling. I wanted to take this opportunity to say that I'm grateful for you. You were one of my favorite things this month. I mentioned in August that I was having some problems that I um, had been uh, needing to see my neurosurgeon. Um, if you hadn't watched it, I'll link both videos where I talk about it in the description box down below. Um, but they're both Sydney Grace videos um, where I'm trying the new palettes. Um, th but that I mentioned that I had five brain surgeries and that I just found out that I needed a sixth. And I had surgery, if everything goes well, I'm filming this in advance, we will have had surgery on Monday, the 28th of August, and I'm probably still in bed recovering. Um, but I definitely wanted to make sure to film ahead so that there were still videos going up. Um, but I wanted to say more than anything, all of the outpouring of kindness, support, love, um, prayers, good vibes, like all of that, that has meant so much to me really, really, really has. I feel like I have someone in my corner here on YouTube. Um, and thank you for being willing to hear me talk about my personal health and my struggle to advocate for myself and how important I think it is to make sure that we ask for what we need. So thank you for being part of my support system this month. Okay, let's talk some beauty stuff. Um, a part of me is like, do I start with my fails? Because I had some fails. Okay. And I... These both make me really sad because at first I was like, ah, love. Okay, first thing is this. This is the Dominique Cosmetics um, brow frame. I like the tone of this product. I like how this product theoretically works because it is a, oh, that's my problem. Okay, right here. She broke as I was trying to sharpen the pencil. So I have this little piece like sitting in here trying desperately to use as much of it as I can until I can't anymore because there is a sharpener right here. Um, like these little grooves right here are like little teeth and you're supposed to be able to lay this down, you know, sharpen and then have a really sharp tip here. And then you're also be able to able to lay it flat and kind of fill in a wide area. The pencil works really well. And I had sharpened this probably a dozen times or more since I got it sometime in late July. And I really liked it. My concern with this initially was that you're not getting a lot of like pencil in here. So aside from the fact that this little teeny tiny bit fell out, like that's, that's a very sizable chunk because after that, this is all the pencil I have left. I used maybe a third of it, a third of it snapped off. And when I roll what's left of it up, that's as much as I have left and then I can't roll it up anymore. So to me, for the 20 what dollar price point, if this is supposed to be sharpenable, but it snaps when you sharpen it, no. What I've been using in place of that that I feel is just as good, I liked the idea of the sharpener in the Dominique Cosmetics. I just decided, you know what, I do like a skinny pencil. My favorite is the one from M. I'm forever mentioning that. But another one that I really like is this one right here from Make. This is their blade line. Because this, it comes out in a skinny, little, teeny, tiny, I mean like it's it's so skinny my camera's like, I can't focus. But there's a lot of it in here. This is the same one that I got when I bought my full face of Make Beauty at the beginning of January, and there's still product in here. Now, I haven't been using it every single day this month because I wasn't using this until this broke, and I was like, you betrayed me, and I pulled this out. Last time I made a purchase from Make, I wasn't sure how much I had left of this, so I bought a refill because guess what? She's refillable. I love that. So I think that this is one of those products that I, I know I like enough that I bought the refill. And when you look at how much there is left in here and how little there is here, this is my first option that I'm gonna recommend to you if you're looking for something that is kind of skinny and can give you those hair-like looks or the one from M. I do love the, what is it, fine liner brow pencil wonderful, but this one's refillable. I, I don't know. 
I wanted to love this. This was just not doing it for me. My next fail kind of breaks my heart because they're from Sydney Grace and I love, I love Sydney Grace so much. I just have never found that I like their cheek products. I've tried both, both of their cream blush and highlight as well as their um, powder blush and highlight. And I only have one highlight and I got rid of all of the powder blushes. I just didn't like the tones. They were okay, um, but I, for me it's like the colors. And I, I got their new cream blush and highlight during their Christmas and July sale. And I used this a lot this month. This color is beautiful. This is the shade Dreamy. It's really pretty. The problem I have with this is this kind of does what I consider to be like a disappearing act. And I don't know whether it's because I got a really fair shade, but like, do you see like when it's blended in, it's almost like, hey, where did it go? Okay, yes, I know I'm a child of the 80s and I love a really strong draped blush, but you put more on and you blend it in. And I find like halfway through the day, it's like, I thought I put on blush this morning and my blush is gone. So I feel like either the hydrating and emollient properties in here are kind of sinking into my skin and hydrating my skin and the pigment is vanishing or it just doesn't have the longevity I want from a cream product. And with their highlight, I feel like their highlight does a little bit better for me. This one, by the way, is called Happy Thoughts. I think I probably, I struggled. Do you see how white and icy it is? I always like something with a little bit of like a either peachy or a gold champagne to it. Um, and I feel like the the swatches online, I thought that's what I was getting here and it's very much white and icy. Okay, fine, that aside. This also does the same thing that the other one does is that it becomes kind of like, wait, where'd you go? I feel like it hangs on a little bit better and you can still see some of the shimmer. It is really a soft and beautiful shimmer. So if you have mature skin and you don't want like sparkle, sparkle, I feel like this is okay, but it's not the first cream blush and cream highlight that I'm gonna choose out of my entire collection. I'll keep using them, but I wanted to love these and wanted to be bold over, and these were not doing it for me. Now, what has been bowling me over and what has been making me like so excited from Sydney Grace are these guys. All right, these were both new releases during the Christmas in July sale, and this one right here is my favorite. This is Heaven on Earth. I'll link a video here for you where I use it. But these murky greens, these kind of warmer tones up on the top row are stunning. You see that I started squirting a little bit of um, setting spray in here and using this as liner. So um, I've been using those both wet and dry. I really, really, really love this palette. And there's a shade in here. This one's called Supernatural. Do you see how it's kind of white, but it has a little bit of a of a blue shift to it. It's so pretty, especially thrown over some of these shades in through here or these shades. And I normally wouldn't, but it, it just makes for an interesting look or an inner corner highlight. I just feel like if I'm gonna be buying a palette, I want a palette that has color, that has um, options, it has textural interest in it. And for me, it's always, I, I'm not gonna tell you it's not, it's these guys, I mean, look, they're just stunning. The pressed pigments from Sydney Grace are like none other. So if you're looking at this going, that color story is not for me, okay, fine. This one, by the way, is the light version. They do have the deep version. I love how inclusive Sydney Grace is and their color story creation. You can pick up this one. This is Love's Journey. If you like basic colors and really pretty, you know, warm nudes, kind of like cooler nudes and more like middle of the road, they're a little more neutral, Love's Journey is beautiful. Another one that comes in a light and a deep version. So some of these darker shades are gonna be darker in the deep version. Some of these lighter shades are gonna be a little bit darker so that they work well on whatever skin tone you have. But again, like the metallics in here, you know I'm a sucker for a Sydney Grace metallic. Look at that. Stunning. I'm like, <laughs> they're so yummy. Um, don't eat these, but I always, I they look like little shiny pieces of candy. They're they're stunning, I love. Now, don't think that because I'm not talking about the mattes, I'm always so drawn into the shiny that I, these mattes are stellar, so good in both palettes. I feel like Sydney Grace shines when they do powder eyeshadows. They have beautiful cream eyeshadows. Um, I do also really like the other one that they released. It's sitting here in my everyday makeup drawer, the Raspberry Kiss, but I haven't reached for this as much this month. Those other two, Love's Journey and Heaven on Earth, have been kind of dominating my eyeshadow moment. Sometimes I'll take one or two shades. Sometimes I'll use like eight. <laughs> it depends.
depends on my mood. Do I have time to play? But you can get really beautiful and interesting looks with one or two shadows from any of these palettes. Or if you have time to sit and play and just kind of like see what you can do, you can just keep building and building and they're stunning. Those have been my most reached for. Now, there have been days where I'm like, I gotta go. I had to go up and down to Seattle a couple of times um, for testing, for doctor's appointments, for things this month. And I was like, okay, I'm leaving at five in the morning because it's a five hour drive from my house to Seattle to see my neurosurgeon. I don't have time or I don't want to take the time in the morning to do my makeup. My hair is air drying. Halfway there, I stop and get a cup of coffee and some breakfast and I take five minutes to put on my face. Here's what I've been using this. I love this. So this is the Liquid Lurex from Lisa Eldridge. This is the shade Cressida. Stupid easy. Stupid easy. All right. So you put it on and you just blend it out with no effort with your finger. Look at that. And it's the shiny pearly wash. If this shade is too light, any of Lisa's um, Liquid Lurex are like that. And then these stay on my eye all day. No flaking, no smudging, no creasing, no fallout. Now, I don't have oily eyelids. Um, this also does not bring out the texture on my mature eyelids. This is the easiest. I wanna look polished, but I don't wanna to try too hard. It's like 10 seconds for this eye, 10 seconds for the other. You could use a brush to blend them out, but I just use my finger and I love. All right, other things that have been part of my, I don't have time and I wanna look like pulled together. Okay. You may be wondering why well, I have two, but this is the Merit Minimalist. This is the, not a foundation, not a concealer. So on days when I'm running, I pull this out. I first bought the shade um, Silk, which I feel is like a little bit, it's the second lightest shade. It's a little warmer. They don't have a neutral shade. And I felt like this one was too dark come winter time. So I got the lightest shade in Bone which is, um, a, you can see the difference. This is definitely warmer, this is definitely cooler. Um, I feel like the lightest shade works best on me, but in the summertime when I have just a little bit more color to my face, I mix them. So I'll put this one here underneath my eyes, center of the face, and the one that's a little bit deeper, I'll put kind of like on the perimeter and then I'll blend them together. Really fast, really easy, fantastic. There are also been a lot of days this month but I just haven't been wearing foundation. This has been the easiest to use, but I fell back in love with one of my old faves, and it's this. This and this one is like been through the war. It's dirty, it's gross. Let me try and clean it up a little bit here, but this is from Estee Lauder. This is the Double Wear Radiant Concealer. This is the lightest shade of it, and I'm to the point now you can see like, you know, I'm trying to scrape the sides. I actually took the stopper out so that I could get as much of this out of there. And the last time I was at an Estee Lauder counter, I picked up another one. Like, this is the full coverage radiant concealer that I can put on under my eyes, corners of my nose, like any of the dark spots here where I used to have um, acne that is just like, we're a little darker here now. Anything else, hyperpigmentation spots, blend it out, and I look great. This is the only thing I have on my face today. I have it on under the eyes. I don't have a corrector. I don't have a foundation that has been a fave. I picked this up on a whim this month. Now this is not a new product, the NARS Radiant Concealer. When I tried this, when it first debuted, I was in my 30s, my mid to late 30s, and my under eyes, okay, I feel like my eyes are changing daily. <laughs> I was gonna say yearly, yes, but sometimes it feels like daily. Like, like one day something will work, and the next day my under eyes are like, not today. <laughs> but this was too hydrating and too radiant for me when it first came out, because I remember when this came out, I was like going to the store to try it out. Um, I have the shade Chantilly, but I love this. I feel like I am, and I don't know, because I haven't looked, I feel like I am getting more product here, because like, she's skinny, and maybe it's, you know, packaging, but this is, this is so easy. Oh my goodness, so easy to like plop on and go. And it is brightening. Um, I like this underneath my eyes, but it's close enough to my natural skin tone that if I just dot it on where I need it and blend it out, I don't look like I have really like white under eyes or white or like around the corners of my nose. It blends really well and it wears well. Another one I've been using, everyone loves this one, I do too. This is shade um, N95, but this is the uh, Givenchy Prisma Libre like skincare and concealer. Great, fantastic. So a lot of concealers, 
the Merit. Now here is the foundation that I have been using this month and I've been using it to try it out. I've been forcing myself to use this and I've learned a couple of things about it. This is a Smashbox always on skin balancing foundation with hyaluronic acid and adaptogens. It's like, first of all, first thing I learned, name is too long for my brain to remember. Can't do it. Um, this is a, uh, I'm, by the way, I have the shade F20N, so second lightest fair shade. Okay, this is a nice foundation. I feel like it has some similarities to other brands that you may be familiar with that are long wearing, something like an Estee Lauder double wear. I feel like this is kind of similar, but I find that this has the tendency, I just started to blend it in here, it's buildable. Um, it looks very full coverage here because I pumped up too much for this space. Um, but it is a really nice, um, comfortable foundation to wear, but this finds a lot of my dryness. I don't think I have dryness, especially not in summer, but I can't imagine what this is gonna look like catching on my combo skin in places where I have dryness in the winter. So I have been like militant. I realize I've been a little lazy this summer, hadn't been exfoliating like weekly like I used to. So I'm back to exfoliating weekly and this is sitting better on the skin. I feel like I have to work a little bit harder to prep my skin to wear this than I do for Estee Lauder Double Wear because this does catch on my skin so I need to make sure I've exfoliated and that I have like a really hydrating SPF down as kind of like my priming option. Um, so I need a little bit more moisture um, and I can't wear like a mattifying SPF or a mattifying primer because then I feel like my face is gonna crack and fall off. Now, as to the claims of it not settling, I didn't find any like large bits of it, like collecting like right here in the lines in my forehead. Um, I did find a little bit of it like right here in the corners of my nose, but that happens with almost all foundation. I didn't find this settling into any of the pores across my nose that are on the slightly larger side. It does also claim to be sweat proof. <laughs> No, I had an experience where I was indoors, house is set at 76 degrees, and I was doing some housework, I was cleaning, and I was perspiring while I was cleaning because I was working hard. <laughs> and I found um, I had like, just like little pinpricks of perspiration coming up around my nose, like right across the bridge of my nose. And I didn't wanna like wipe it off because I knew I would be disturbing products, so I just let it evaporate. And then when I looked at everything later, the foundation where I had been perspiring across the bridge of my nose was very disturbed. Like parts of it, it kind of like a foundation kind of grouped in one area and bare in another. Now it didn't take much effort, like just whatever foundation brush I had used that morning, you know, to just kind of boop, 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 boop and set it with powder. And I kind of was able to blend it back in, but I don't know that I would say that it's sweat proof. So if you are really sweating, I don't know that if you had like water or something like pouring down your face, or if you got raindrops on you, it's gonna do it. But if it's coming from within your skin, it might actually push the foundation out and then you have that sort of disturbance. But it did repair itself easily, but I would not have wanted to leave the house like that where I had like foundation in some areas and not in others because of where the perspiration was coming through. I feel like this is not necessarily a fail because when it's good, it's good. But I think it's basically, I want you to know how I've had to kind of hold its hand, but I think it might do better in the spring and the fall, maybe, it might be too um, mattifying for the winter time for me, but I have to be careful how I use it in the summer. It's it's not a win. I know there are a lot of other people who, this is like their new holy grail. I know Tati was saying that. I know Risa Does Makeup was loving this. I think it's a good foundation. It's just not life altering for me because I have to like hold its hand a little too much. I've been using basically two mascaras this month. <laughs> One of them is from Make. This is the Lash Prototype. This is a fabulous mascara. I love how heavy and how weighty it feels. I like the component. It's super, super pretty, shiny. And it has, um, it's a traditional mascara formula, but it has a very, I hate to say basic, but it has like the perfect gap between the bristles where it loads up the lashes, but it doesn't get too goopy too quick. But if you wanna have like a really like intense, almost gunky lash, and I know not everybody loves that, but sometimes I love a gunky lash. This gives it to me. This really performs as well as my beloved um, Lancome Mister Big. Love this mascara. Here's the other one I've been using. There have been a lot of days when I know I'm gonna be up late or I've got a lot on my plate and I don't wanna have to really work to get a traditional formula off. 
And I love a tubing mascara. So this Thrive Liquid Lash Extensions has been exactly what I want. It's what I'm wearing today. Now I'm gonna have a long day and I'm gonna want ease taking it off at the end of the day. It's a little bit of water and it slides right off. But this is what the um, wand looks like. I don't always do well with um, those little silicone brushes, but the more I use this, the better I'm getting. I feel like I'm I'm figuring it out finally, because normally I avoid wands like this. Um, I prefer something more like this, but like if I want a traditional mascara and a little bit more volume, or if I'm looking for length and a little bit more of a natural look, I'll go for this. But these have been like my mascaras of choice this month. For highlight, man, I can see I'm all, like down to here. I love the uh, Elevated Glow from Lisa Eldridge. This is the shade Pink Moon. My favorite shade is Crystal Nebula. And I think that when I'm done with this one, because um, we're getting there, you know, we've only got like maybe a quarter of it left, I will go and probably repurchase Crystal Nebula. But this is the lightest of all the shades. The other one tends to be, but, but you see how pretty and glowy it is? It does that on your skin in such a lovely way. It never looks glittery. It never looks like it catches in texture. It just makes my skin look radiant and beautiful, hydrated and lovely, and I love it but I, I still do prefer Crystal Nebula shade-wise. All right, the other highlight I have been using is this one from Ritual Defeat. This one's called Phosphines. Oh my goodness, it's stunning. This is what it looks like right here. And uh, this is the Rare Light Cream Luminizer, but when you start to blend it in, another one of those, this is the one I have on the tops of my cheekbones today. It, it's not too much. It's just enough. I really like the cream products from Ritual Defeat. Color Nectar Pigment Balm, the other, what's it called? Their other cream blush product that's called their Inner Glow Cream Pigment. I like this as well, but I really have been kind of defaulting to like, even on days when I'm not using those other Ritual Defeat products, I will reach for this. This sits beautifully if I just pick it up with my fingers on, you know, on my face. It goes well over a set face or an unset face. If I'm using all creams and liquids, I can throw some of this on. If I want a little bit more highlight midway through the day, I can throw some of this on. Um, I think it's a really beautiful, elegant formula and it's not too much. I mean, I, I feel like it's another one of those that is good for mature skin. Um, I don't feel like it uh, emphasizes the texture. It is a little bit bolder of a glow than the one from Lisa Eldridge. This is more of like a highlight highlight and this is just pretty glowy skin. So depending on what your preference is, the one thing I will mention with this, they use essential oils in their formulations. You can smell the lavender. I think they also use um, frankincense and other ingredients in here that have a very strong scent. So if you are sensitive to scents or irritated by essential oils, the Ritual Defeat products, probably not for you. I picked up a blush, I think was it tail end of July, beginning of August from Make. I love this. This right here is the Heat Stroke Dewy Cheek Tint. This is the shade Swelter. I'm wearing it today. Do you see how bold it is? It doesn't have to look like this. Um, I usually put some on the back of my hand and then I pick it up with the brush and I can get it to look like this and I love it. The shade is Swelter. I've been obsessed with this shade, but I love kind of like a berry red cheek. Love it, especially in the summertime. I think it's a really, really pretty, but it doesn't have to be this bold. But I like that it feels dewy. I like that it has a little bit of glow to it. Not because it's kind of like greasy, but it has a little bit of that cream glow that makes my skin just look happy and healthy. And it does add that extra layer of like hydration on, but it, does, it doesn't always stay dewy because I'm wearing it right now and I don't feel like my cheeks are tacky. I don't have hair that sticks to it. I think this is a really beautiful and elegant formula. And instead of just taking it, I mean, because you can, you can just take it and draw it on your cheek. But since I'm pretty fair, I get the best application when I put some on the back of my hand or on my palette and pick it up with like a brush like this. And then I just kind of you know, tap it on where I want it, and I can control the amount of pigment. Now, one time this month, I was like, I might even just put on too much, because I, I think I had on an adequate amount before, but it's like, look how I do it. Um, I was using it as lipstick. Now, if your lips are fuller than mine, have more collagen and fewer of those lines around the edge of your mouth, you're gonna love this. Because when I put this on as lipstick, it was beautiful. And then an hour later, it had found all of those little lines. It was like, and I look like a crazy person. You know, I put it on just like this, and it's so pretty.
but then it found all of those lines. I love the color that it is. I love the sheerness of it. feels good on the lips, but if you have problems with lips that kind of have those lines and they find the lines, this does it, but I love it on the cheeks. I even love it on the lips, but I would have to like line my lips to kind of contain it, and I don't wanna work that hard. So this for me is a cheek product, but it's comfortable, it's nourishing, it's so nice. All right, other cheek products. I've been wearing my Gucci bronzer a lot. I talk about how good this is so much. And I I know there's a scent to this. I know she's expensive. <sighs> but I can't tell you the last time I fell in love with a bronzer this much. <laughs> like I've had other bronzers that I've really liked, but this one, before I think the last one that I loved this much was the one from Wayne Goss, like the duo, the contour and the bronzer. But this is a different shade of bronzer. This is more of a rosy bronzer, where the one from Wayne is more of a golden bronzer. So since they have kind of like a different, and his is radiant and this one is matte, I feel like they fit two different places in my collection. But they're the two that I seem to reach for the most. And this is beautiful, not too much, just enough. If you have fair skin, shade 01 is amazing. Also for setting powder this month, I mean, look how much I've been using this. This is the Ambient Lighting Powder from Hourglass and Diffuse Light. This must be my like seventh like pan of this. Um, I do have this shade in a lot of the holiday palettes, so I'll try and work through this shade in the holiday palettes before I go out and get a full size. But I've had a full size of this product since I discovered it 16 years ago. I think I was pregnant with my oldest at the time. I think it's been 16 years I've been using the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder. Absolutely love this and I, I know why it's kind of like a holy grail for me. Another one that is a holy grail for me and that I've gone through, I think this is my third or my fourth one, and I can tell I'm, I'm getting another significant divot, is this from Beauty Pie. This is their Uber Lucent One Powder Wonder. It's an Uber Lucent Universal, that's the shade, but it looks like a white powder, and but it's very translucent. But do you see how there's a little bit of shimmer to this? This works beautifully under the eyes with my more mature eyes to set without looking heavy. If I start getting like any oils that come up right in here, like that's where I get a lot of my oils, I can take like a little puff like this and just kind of tap right here and it never looks like I have too much powder on. Or I can take a small brush and you know, put it right where I need it. And I never really feel like it's not flat matte, but it's not glowy radiant like you walk out into the sun and you look like a sparkly vampire. That's not what's going on here. This is a really beautiful, elegant, very lightweight, very finely milled. Love, 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 love so much that I have a backup of this. I don't ever want to be like, I hit the bottom of the pan and then I'm like, I'm out and not have another one. So I think there's a good chance that when I hit pan on this, the next time I make a beauty pie order, I'll order another one because this is the one powder I do not want to be without. It's been a really busy month for me. Um, I have been in and out of doctor's appointments. I have been wearing less makeup on the daily unless I'm filming. Um, and that's kind of when I take the time to sit down and enjoy the pleasure that I get from putting on makeup and you know, trying different colors and different formulas. But for ease of daily life, I've been reaching for a smaller, more curated amount of lip products. I'm still, so in love with the Clarins Lip Oil. This is the shade Chocolate. This is so beautiful. This is a amazing, sheer, glossy, little bit brown, little bit, you can see it on the doe foot, there's a little bit of red in here, but not so much that it looks like red or brown, but on the lips with my natural lip color coming showing through, this is just stunning and easy. Um, this is the sort of thing that I'll throw on my sunglasses, you know, put this on, take my kids to school in the morning, and then come home, take a shower and get ready. Or if I have to go, I've been running errands all day and I haven't really had time to reapply a lipstick, I'll throw this on over the top without a mirror. It's fantastic. I know that this is a pricier lip oil, but the experience alone from like the doe foot, okay, a lot of other doe foots that are big and chunky like this are really rigid. This one, look how it bends. It bends so it hugs your lips. And the velvet on here, sometimes, not all doe foots are made the same. Sometimes the velvet is stiff. This feels like like the softest little kitten's paw as you're putting it on. I love this. This is the sort of product because the experience is so good with the packaging, with the shade, with everything. Like I know, you see how it moves? 
I never have to worry that in my purse I'm gonna get oil dripping out the bottom because I've had products like that before. This doesn't do that. The packaging is good, the applicator is great, the product on the inside, that's why I love this. I would repurchase when I hit the bottom. All right, been loving brown lips, uh, so I pulled out again um, one of Lisa Eldridge's Luxuriously Lucent Lipstick. This is Meet Me in Berlin. I've been wearing this so much, I noticed the other day, okay, so Lisa's Luxuriously Lucent's all come with this little L monogram here, and the fact that I have gotten to the point where I'm starting to wear the L down, I've been reaching for this a lot this summer, especially this month. This one has been living in my purse. I had to pull it out of my purse. I think I picked up the Roman Glasting Melting Bombs in late July. Might have been, or no, I think it was late July. All right, but I've been addicted, addicted. Look how messy mine is. It's like, you can see like there's stuff everywhere. I love this formula. Um, this is the shade Hippie Berry. It's not really berry, it's more of a red, but it's a sheer glossy red. It's so easy, it's, it's so easy. I don't need a mirror, I just throw it on. I don't have problems because it is a little bit thicker. You know how a lot of those products that are kind of like a melting gloss and stick form, you click up and you can't roll up or roll down. This one rolls up and rolls down. So it's a little bit thicker, has a little bit more body to it. It still offers that shiny kind of sheer look, but it doesn't instantly just kind of find all my lines. like. There are products that do that, which is why I can't wear this as a lipstick, because I would, <laughs> but it, it doesn't work well for me. This I like so much. Um, the other thing is I fell back in love with my Merit lipsticks. Um, in July, I picked up the limited edition shade Aperitif, which was a red, and then I was like, I forgot how good these are. Here's another one that I've used so much that the little monogram of the name is starting to get worn away. This is the shade Baby. I love this. It is a beautiful, kind of pinky nude shade, but I've been going for easy things. I haven't been wearing a lot of really heavy, deep, dark lipsticks. I haven't been wearing a lot of really punchy colors other than this one here. Everything has been really nude. And I recently picked up another Merit one. Man, this is in the shade 1990. This is Merit 1990, and this is Lisa Eldridge, um, Meet Me in Berlin. I feel like this is just a hair cooler there's just a, a teensiest little amount of warmth in this, but I was wearing 1990 before I threw on like the cheek product over the top. Um, this formula, so good, so good. Um, when I kept reaching for aperitif in July and kept reaching for baby in um, August, I was like, you know what? I know I'm gonna be ordering those solo shadows from Merit. When I do, I'm just gonna throw 1990 in because I've been wanting it. So now I own five of these. They've only ever created nine shades and I have more than half of them. I think that says a lot. They're $26, they're really easy, super comfortable, very nourishing. They're just a stunning lip formula. So if you're looking for a high-end but not luxury lipstick, I really like these. I'm trying to think of other things that I've been enjoying this month. I've been making a lot of like salsa, been making gazpacho. <laughs> I've been making tomato salads. My tomato plants are just like producing like crazy. And it's like I'm giving away tomatoes. Like, would you like some tomatoes? <laughs> I gave some to my mother-in-law today, gave some to one of my friends yesterday. I made tomato salad last night, um, but I've been enjoying my garden. I, I This year I planted cucumbers, tomatoes, and herbs. Because in previous years where I have like the whole thing, it just gets away from me and then everything is either overgrown or not taken care of or not properly maintained. So I wanted to keep it manageable. Um, so I've been loving that. Been spending a lot of time crocheting. Ooh, let me show you. I finished a new sweater this month and I have, we've had a cold snap. It was like in the 70s and it was rainy and it was a little chilly so I put on my new sweater and I have been loving it. I love this. Um, I had a pattern that I adapted and it's not the same, but I, I love how, how cozy it is. I'm not gonna be able to wear it too long today, but I like that it's a little tighter here and then it balloons out here. I like that it has a fuzzy little like halo to it. I like that it ombres from kind of like a cream under the arm all the way down to kind of, I don't know. I just had so much fun making this sweater and I'm glad that, you know, September is here. By the end of this month, I'll be able to wear this like picking up the kids after school, you know, I, and I'm excited. I love sweater weather, so I wanna make like one more sweater, but I don't know. I'm trying to use my yarn stash and not buy any more because my husband's always like, do you need more yarn? <laughs> um, so I've been, I've been enjoying crocheting. 
As for TV, I'm trying to think of things. I finally finished Outlander. I know Outlander finished like mid-August and I just hadn't had the time to sit down and finish watching it. I've always loved the Outlander books from Diana Gabaldon. I think they're so well written. I really, really love the idea and the storyline. And so when they started a TV show, I know I have a friend who's like, I will never watch it. It's not the same. And I know it's not the same, but I enjoy it. So um, I, I had been watching and enjoying Outlander in August. There really has not been a lot of television but I did go and see the Barbie movie, which I loved. I went with my youngest, my oldest went with one of her girlfriends. And so I was like, Lils, you wanna go? So Lily and I went to go see it and we loved it. We laughed, we cried, like we had a lot of feelings. It was really, really good. I would totally recommend it if you haven't seen it yet, um, but I, I loved it. But it's been kind of a weird month. All of our focus has been on, you know, doctors and surgery and, prepping for all of that. So there's been a little bit less time to kind of enjoy life. And I'm hoping that in September that I'll just be able to just kind of like, okay, I'm gonna live on the couch. I'm gonna make two more sweaters, one for me and one for whichever of my kids wins rock, paper, scissors. And then in October, I'll make the other one one. So, but who, who wants it first? <laughs> I think that's kind of where I'm gonna be. Not doing very much, really, really, really chill, giving myself permission to just relax and then doing things that bring me joy. I would love to know how your August was. What have you been up to? Um, have there been any beauty products that have really been like the one thing you can count on as you're going through your busy schedule and your busy day, like this is it, or the new product that you tried that just blew your mind? Let me know in the comment section down below. Again, thank you so much for all of your support and your kindness during this last month. It was um, weird and stressful. Um, but I will be back filming new videos when I'm finally back up on my feet. But there will be some pre-recorded ones that I got recorded and edited before I had my surgery. Probably for next week as well. All right. Thank you so much. Have an amazing, amazing day. And I will see you again soon.